Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Joseph Cotton in Westward Ho! on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars and outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize one of the most stirring and popular adventure stories of all time, Westward Ho, by the English writer Charles Kingsley. Written just about a century ago, it has kept its flavor well since then, perhaps because even in those days it conveyed a sense of the great days of English history, those days of great deeds and great names, Elizabeth, Drake, Shakespeare, Days when England was not only a land for heroes to live in, but also for plain men to be heroic in. Westwood Ho has this spirit notably, and to star as its hero, we are fortunate indeed to welcome back to our playhouse that distinguished actor, Joseph Cotton. And now, here is Frank Goss, from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're looking for a way to say something to someone you care for, look for a Hallmark card, and you'll find the right words. Because Hallmark cards are designed to say what you want to say, the way you want to say it, and in the good taste you demand of anything that bears your personal signature. That's why Hallmark on the back of a greeting card has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. And now Hallmark Playhouse presenting Charles Kingsley's Westward Ho, starring Joseph Cotton. <laughs> It was a year which was to live on in book and song and men's hearts. A year in which the history of the world was changed in a few days. Summer days of 1588. The grey skies leaned low over the English Channel. The sea ran in long, heavy swells. Captain Amyas Lee stood on the quarterdeck and gazed about the ship at the torn sails, the splintered mast, the wrecked rigging. It's done and over and we're still afloat. Now I may rest, home to Bidford Town and memories. <laughs> Here, that's talk of an old man, Captain. Who's the fellow brave, brave enough to call me old at 29? I've had a short voyage, as lives go. Aye, it's not too many years since I walked Bidford Quay. A schoolboy with gown and slate and willing ears for the great tales of the sailor men. True, lads, it's true on the word of a Christian gentleman. One half of the gold and silver plate in number to Dias would pave all the streets in Devon and more. That was Mr. Oxen, fresh from the new world, all a swagger in crimson velvet with golden hoops swinging from his ears and jeweled fingers flashing in the sunlight. There for the taking, me lads. Now's your time. I've 40 men waiting in Plymouth. Give me a dozen Bitford mariners and we'll sail to pick the lock of the new world. Westward ho, riches for all, shame to the Spaniards, and glory for good Queen Bess. Westward ho. But who would take a schoolboy, not Mr. Oxen? I needed another two years, and then it was Westward ho in truth for me. I sailed in the Golden Hind with Francis Drake and saw England no more for three long years. In those same three years, my brother Frank had made a name for himself at the Queen's Court. We had dinner together in his lodgings. Yes, Amyas. You arrive in good time. Great plans are afoot. I've heard some talk already. The Queen thinks kindly of the new world. And also my friend Sir Walter Raleigh. 
He proposes an expedition to North America, a colony somewhere north of the land called Florida. Aye, if the Spanish permit it. Amias, you have sailed around the world with Drake. Your head is full of experience. Now we need your advice. Ah, but before you give it, I wish you to hear the report of another Bidford seaman. Yo, Salvation Yo. All right, sir. Come forward, man. This is Salvation Yo? No. Many have said that, Mr. Lee. Three years out in the jungles of Panama will age any man. But I saw you sail with Mr. Oxenham. I was at the quay when you... Mr. Oxenham is dead, sir. And all his crew. Plymouth and Bedford been all save myself. Shipwreck. A pleasant death that would have been, sir. Better than the Spanish gibbets. Frank. It is true. The devil's caught us by surprise at La Guayra. They attacked with a dozen galleys rowed by the poor Indians that they've enslaved. Ah, oh, the old new world is in chains. And with such cruelty as would make even Nero faint. Oxenham dead. And all his crew. And now, now, brother, your advice. Should there be English colonies in the Americas? There must be. And there cannot be while Spanish tyranny rules. Drake and I saw a bit of their tortures. If we come, they will set the Indians against us, and they will say we bring even greater cruelties. Mm, yes, true. But your advice... Defy King Philip where we may, on the Spanish main. Plunder his galleons, take the gold and silver which fattens his greed and pays for his garrison. Ha, ha, ha! You see, yo, I said my brother will join us. Aye, and now we cannot fail. Wait, what am I joining? The good ship rose, 200 tons and well armed. We lack but a brave captain, and now we have that. Or do you say otherwise? Mr. Yo. Aye, sir. Tell me, would you know who ordered the death of Mr. Oxenham? And of the men of Bitford. Aye, the Governor General of La Guara, sir. Don Guzman Maria Magdalena Sotomayor de Soto. Very well. Then I know what course to set. Don Guzman and I shall meet very shortly. <laughs> hundred strong, every man a sailor and every man a soldier. Our days passed in drill with musket and cannon, bow and cutlass, and the nights with stories and fancies of the future. Spanish main stretches from Panama to the Orinoco, and every wave bears a galleon of Spanish plate. It's somewhere in Peru, a city built all that gold. The Incas call it Manoa. Will we find it, lads? Will we? The story goes that Cortez came within three days' march of El Dorado and then turned back. May his folly be our fortune. Lake Hall! Lake Hall! All hands look forward! Aye, oh, sir. What? Oh, it's no ship. It's the fortress of La Guaira! silver and fabulous cities and Spanish galleons. We had come for them all, and now they lay before us. It was a desperate game, and the first play was about to begin. As dawn grayed in the east, we spied hard upon the floating guardians of La Guara. Three ships, my brother. Two galleys of a hundred oars and a great man of war. And we outnumber them. It's one Englishman to only three Spaniards. Sound the stations! <laughs> That great galleon, she's the Madre Dolorosa that took Mr. Oxenham. Don Guzman himself is in command. And our revenge is upon us. Helmsman, steer for the galleon. Gunners, load and aim. Trumpet and drum, salute your queen. Three times. 
times we boarded the Spaniard and three times were driven back. Don Guzman fought with the fury of a cornered lion. Then we boarded again. I cut my way almost to the governor's side when it happened. The powder magazine! The Spaniard sink it! Back to our ship before we draw on with her! stood at our rail and watched the last of the Madre Dolorosa until finally only a few spars floated on the heaving blue. The two Spanish galleys which remained turned about in panic and fled toward the protection of La Guara. Shall we follow the Mamias? Yo, yeah, what damage? All topsails gone, bad all at the water line, seven dead and sixteen. No, we will not follow. Still a good beginning, Amias, and good... Uh, Back good. of Frank Dill before he falls. No, 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 no. Oh. Too late, Amias. Spanish arrow. Gently, sir. Uh, if we may prop him against the cannon here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Amias, the Don, Don Guzman. Yes. I saw him swim to one of the galleys. He still lives. And not for long. I came to avenge Oxenham. Now I stay to avenge my brother. Stay for another reason. For England. Remember our plans, Amias. Remember our... Oh. I'll remember. I... I'll remember. The new world, a better world than the old... Heartbreak and battle come from the old world, but only for a time. The new world is our new chance, a new beginning, a new life. I shall not forget. Just a moment, we will return to the second act of Westward Ho, starring Joseph Cotton. In the years when gallant blades with handlebar mustaches used to court Grandma, Valentines were among the loveliest tokens of sentiment she received. If you ask her, you'll probably find she's cherished some of them to this very day. But you needn't look farther than the store where you buy your Hallmark cards to find that same old-time appeal in the Hallmark Valentines of this year. Here you'll find all the charm of yesteryear on Valentines as fresh as tomorrow. And because these are Hallmark Valentines, you'll find just the one you want to send to everyone you want to remember on that day. Mother and dad, sister and aunt, friends far away, or friends right down the street. And of course, for that special someone, you want to say something special too. That's because the words on a Hallmark card are so carefully chosen, making it possible for you to find a Hallmark card that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. So whether you're looking for old-fashioned charm or Valentine's with the saucy smile of a leap year miss, look for that familiar hallmark on the back of every Valentine you send. Then you'll be sure your friends will know you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of Westward Ho, starring Joseph Cotton. <laughs> An English sea captain paced the deck of his battered ship in that year of destiny, 1588. Like all years of destiny, it marked the climax of a long series of events. Years of fighting and rivalry on the high seas, which Captain Amyas could never forget. We had won the sea battle off La Guara, but at too great a price. My brother was dead, nearly half my crew wounded and the sea was pouring through a great hole in our side at a rate which would soon sink us. What's to be done, Captain? We have no choice. We must run the ship onto the beach and take to the jungle. The jungle, sir. That or stay here in sinking condition until Don Guzman sends a new fleet to end our day. Aye, the jungle's welcome to us, Captain. They had made us south, sir. There lies the golden city of the Incas. Show us Peru, sir, the city of Manor. 
we beached the ship and burned it so that it might be of no use to the Spaniard. Then, laden with such weapons and food as we could carry, southward we struck. One week, two weeks, one month, three months, but there was no man of war. Then westward, five weary months, and then north again. The golden city of the Incas did not exist, only jungle and mountains, aye, and savages waiting for us with poisoned blow darts. And then, as if Providence wished to give us hope, we spied a rainbow. It rose from the mist of a great waterfall. There was a lake with soft grass at its edges and flowering trees drifting their petals onto the water. We threw ourselves into the lake, shouting and laughing like children. Captain, do water and them speak with the voices of women? There, there, behind that bush, it's a girl, a white girl. Oh. The men brought her to me, kicking and struggling and screaming. She was clothed in rags, yet more beautiful than a princess in a Captain, what are you talking about? Oh, whatever it is, I don't think it's very flattering. I think she wants us to go away. Yeah, you, you there. What's your name? Uh, como se llama? Hiya. Hayakanora. Hayakanora. That was her name. And she hated the Spanish. She had cause. She said her father had been an Englishman and the Spanish had killed him long ago. And then her mother and she had fled into the jungle. How many years had passed, she had no way of telling. Once I had convinced her that we were enemies of the Spanish, she clung to my arm and begged to go with us. She led us through the jungle by a secret path that only she knew. She brought us to the top of a hill and pointed to the sea beyond. Below us was a Spanish port. Cartagena, and in the harbor rode a great galleon. If we could take that, we would see England again. It will cost us a pretty price, sir. We've lost many men, and the rest are sick. We have little powder. It will cost us nothing, Mr. Drew, except cunning. Look closely. You see those small boats going out to the galleon and back? Aye, sir. They're loading gold plate. Once the ship is filled, the crew will go ashore for last night. While they carouse, we steal the small boats and go quietly aboard. Those we find on watch over the rail with them. And then hoist sail for home. We'll do it, lads. Home with a cargo of Spanish gold. Three nights later, we struck. By the time the Spaniards on shore discovered their stupidity, we were eastward ho with a lively breeze. My worries were past, all save one. What was I to do with this strange young girl of the jungle? I decided that it was my duty to teach her the language of her father. She was a quick pupil. Soon she was able to ask all manner of questions about England, my home and country. And will I be an English lady? If you study hard. I cannot will. So you will be proud of me. I'm sure it doesn't matter. You'll stay with my mother. Will she like me? I don't know. Oh, yes, of course. The... Same way you like me? Now, uh, no more questions. I've got things to do. Senor Amyar, yeah. teach me how to say in English, Te amo. Te amo. Now, girl, would you let the man do his work? Go, now, go anywhere and leave me in peace. <laughs> Not enough that I teach you English. Now I must find you a husband. Even before we dropped anchor at Bitford Town, I knew something great was afoot. The harbor was filled with armed merchantmen and ships of war. A letter was brought aboard from Sir Francis Drake. He was in Bitford and would see me at once. The Spanish Armada has sailed, Captain. Spain means to destroy us once for all, to take the new world for her own and what she will of Europe. Then farewell to our English laws and the rights of every man everywhere. Admiral Drake, command me as you will. You will captain a stout ship, the Vengeance. You will sail with my squadron. May you do as bravely as that day before the fortress of Lagaira. Since you've heard of it, you must know it was no victory. Don Guzman still lives. Aye, and fights again. He leads the flotilla of Aragon. In the name of his ship? The Santa Catarina. The Santa Catarina. 
and I sail the vengeance. May it be so. So for the second time, I came home to Bidford only to sail off again. Ayaka Nora rowed out with me in the long boat. She was crying softly. Senor Lee. No, Ayaka Nora, no, no. I... I am sorry. You must help my mother. She'll need you. A smile. <laughs> Not be afraid. I will try. If, uh, if something happens, I have money now. My mother will take care of you. You understand? Yes, Senor Amnon. You must study. You have many things to learn. I will be an English lady. Yes, and you'll have many friends. You'll, you'll find the husband. Who? A fine gentleman. He must be the best man in all Devon. He will be. Mm -hmm. You'll be happy with him, won't you? <laughs> of course you will be. You'll have fine children, many of them. Yes. And... And there's nothing to be afraid of, is there? No. Senor Amyars, hmm? tell me what I must do if you come back. Tell me this. Close your eyes. <sighs> Te amo. Te amo. You will come back. I will, my dear. I will. We put out from Bidford Town, Salvation Yo, Master Drew, and a few others of my old crew, and joined the gathering fleet, a flimsy wall of wood and men to stand between tyranny and freedom. The day broke gray and ugly. Upon the horizon, high and white, the Spanish sails came toward us, a mighty crescent of ships, the armada which all Europe calls invincible. From the deck of the Ark Royal, Admiral Drake's cannon gave signal for battle. <laughs> Gentlemen, this day England fights alone, but she fights for all men everywhere and for all time to come. Gunners, begin! <laughs> melted into one, a vast floating volcano. Night came and another day the battle went on. Up the channel past Portland, beneath the cliffs of fresh water, off the Isle of Wight. Seven days, eight days, nine days. Gale and storm and fog added their terrors. And then suddenly, melting out of the mist, appeared a mighty spirit. Captain! The Santa Catarina. Ah, you know what answer to make to her. She's burnt almost to the water line, sir. Aye. And yet Don Guzman still stands a deck. Enough of vengeance. I've had my fill. Don Guzman! Don Guzman! He hears you. He raises his sword in salute. I offer you quarter. Do you accept? I am a Spaniard, sir. I take no quarter save from my king and my god. Look, sir. She sinks. I... May he have quarter that I cannot... Captain Lee. Captain. Uh, I, oh, yes. Yo. Oh, has the Admiral's boat come alongside? He's aboard, sir. Oh. <laughs> I stand here, wool gathering. A modest praise for such feats as you've done today, Sir Armius. Only the duty of an Englishman, sir. Sir? You called me, sir? I am rightly. 
The Queen has a report of your bravery and sends her compliments. Henceforth, my dear lad, you are Sir Amyas Lee. Sir Amyas Lee. And soon there will be a lady, a Yakanora Lee, knighthood and honors. But what would they be without freedom? To be a free man and a free woman in a free country. The boast of tyranny has been met as it always must be, and the right of free men has prevailed as it must and as it shall always. and James Hilton will return in a moment. Of all the compliments you ever receive, there's probably none you enjoy more than those to which you can reply, I'm so glad you like it because, you see, I made it myself. Here's a way to let your children experience this pleasure and at the same time teach them thoughtfulness and in a way all children will enjoy. It's with the hallmark Make Your Own Valentine Kit. In this kit are gay red cards, lacy white panels, and special cutout designs. There are perky kittens, baby chicks, puppies, ducklings, appealing little animals that youngsters love. It's so easy because it's all done without scissors, paint, or glue. For only a dollar, this Hallmark kit contains the makings of 16 Valentines. There are other Hallmark make-your-own kits for as little as 50 cents. Ask for them at the store where you buy all of your Hallmark cards. Look for Hallmark on the cover of the box. The same symbol of quality you always look for on the back of a card when you care enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Joseph Cotton, for a grand performance. As always, you made this evening a very great occasion for us. Well, it was a pleasure to be here. I always enjoy appearing on your Hallmark Playhouse. That reminds me, when Frank Goss talked about the Hallmark Make Your Own Valentine kits, I couldn't help thinking what a... A good idea, that is, like so many of your home hawk ideas. Well, that's very nice of you to say, Joe. We appreciate the compliment. Now, Jimmy, uh, what have you for next week? Next week, our story will be one of the great romances of literature, Jane Austen's novel, Persuasion. And to play its charming heroine, we welcome the return of Deborah Carr. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our producer-director is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our script tonight was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Joseph Cotton may currently be seen in the Metro Golden Mayor production, The Man with the Cloak. The role of Aya Kenora tonight was played by Charlotte Lawrence. Others in our cast were Joseph Kearns, Herbert Butterfield, Ted DeCorsia, and Eric Snowden. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Deborah Carr in Jane Austen's novel, Persuasion. And the week following, on Valentine's Day, a story of Clara and Robert Schumann, starring Joan Fontaine. And the week after that, Herbert E. Stover's Powder Mission on the Hallmark Playhouse. Thank you for this opinion, which will be heard over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC of Kansas City.